Hello friends and welcome to this presentation of how to pass the 2023 level two CFA exam. My name is Dr. BJ Tolia. I am the level two professor at Kaplan Swayzer. And in that role, I author slash edit the level two product portfolio as well as teach level two content. All right. So let's uh, talk about what we are going to cover in this presentation. So first, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the basics of level two, including the curriculum, the exam format and the historical pass rates. Then we'll go into learning the meat of this. What is the uh, learning style that is uh, most conducive to a successful outcome? And then how Kaplan products can help you in that learning journey. All right, so 10 topic areas, nothing new to you, basically all same as level one, except obviously it is all brand new content. Everything is new at level two. So within quantitative methods, you're gonna learn about topics that you have not seen in level one, for example. And not only that, one of the big things that you're gonna see is the level of depth is much higher. So it is not as shallow as you saw in level one. We are still relying on the, the standards of practice handbook for ethics coverage. So it's basically the same content as level one, but the stylistic presentation of exam questions will differ, which also we'll talk about in a little bit. No GIPS at level two. You'll have GIPS again at level three. So it's not, GIPS is not covered at level two. All right. Level two is commonly called the valuation level. And you know, once you notice all these asset classes are taking up a large portion of the exam weight. So uh, used to be also called as the counting level because of the difficulty of the FSA readings that are covered in level two. But the exam weight for FSA has come down over the last five years. And so now it is 10 to 15 percent, which is nothing more than what is uh, uh, the case for equity and fixed income as well. All right. Now, the exam format is all item sets. Each item set is going to be four questions four multiple choice questions, just yet, like you saw at level uh, one, three answer choices. But the presentation is you're going to see an essay or a vignette preceding the four questions. So the four questions will reference either the exhibit or the personalities being talked about in the story in the vignette. So they'll say, is Marsha correct about statement one? And then you look at statement one that Marsha made in the vignette and are critically evaluating that statement. So that is your item set format. When you go through this learning journey preparation process, you will come across item sets in the Q bank. So it'll give you good feel as to stylistically how item sets are different. It is not going to be a whole lot different than level one. It is just a different way. That's all. All right. Now, there are two sessions. Each session is 132 minutes, roughly two and a quarter hour long. So there are two sessions and with an optional break. And each session will have 11 item sets, basically 44 question. Only 10 out of the 11 are graded. So one of the item sets in each session is going to be a dummy. That is something that is being used by the Institute to collect data on new questions in the, you know, uh, in the exam question pool. And as, uh, once a uh, slew of candidate in a in a specific uh, uh, window, go through those questions, they will get a difficulty rating assigned and uh, uh, then they can be used in live testing in subsequent windows, subsequent exam windows. All right, the pass rates for level two, they don't appear to be too bad, mid 40s, but keep in mind the entering pool of candidates being evaluated are pre-screen, meaning these are the candidates that have already passed level one. So now you are dealing with a more sophisticated, more uh, uh, smart candidate pool 
against which you are evaluated and still the pass rate is still you know mid 40 so it gives you an indication of the level of difficulty i'm not trying to dissuade you or discourage you for this exam uh, in, in your learning journey what i'm trying to tell you is if you don't approach this with the seriousness it deserves it is not going to end well so i just want you to realize it all right five differences from level one we're going to kind of go in uh, a reverse order number five is topic weightings are variable we already went through that so for example fixed income was 10 to 15 percent rather than exact 12 percent that you would have seen in level one um, second difference is item set format we already talked about it instead of individual multiple choice question being standalone here now you have item set with four related questions so an item set in in equity will all have four question in equity um, more integration of different topics what you'll find is how each component of this uh, 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 different parts of the curriculum is really synthesized when it goes to the final task and that task for level two is what valuation so you'll see the linkages that exist between different topic area very nicely and if you are looking at it as a enrichment if you're looking at his enjoyment of learning then you will enjoy the finding those linkages uh, hidden in the curriculum all right number two this is a subtle difference but huge one important one the exam writers are charged with evaluating your analytical skills so basically they want to be able to separate out the wheat from the chaff the, the those who have analytical skills versus those that don't and the tool that they use is this exam so they are going to focus on your analytical skill it is no longer sufficient to simply memorize your your formulas and memorize the content it is going to rely on your understanding and depth of understanding of the material do you know what you're really doing that's what the exam writer is trying to figure out all right and then finally way more material if you go through the actual uh, cf institute curriculum books six books huge quantity of material much more so than level one so just you know if you thought level one was horrible well it is even more so so the breadth and the depth of the curriculum has expanded at level two compared to level one and therefore just more material for you to enjoy you get it for the same price all right how to efficiently prepare for the level two exam i'll summarize it a rigorous well planned so you need a plan and then execution of the plan three three hundred plus hour and again the number of hours is completely variable it depends there is no hard and fast it depends on individual candidate also you can never be over prepared i mean it is always better even if for example you would have passed it 400 hours it may make sense for you to put in a little extra cushion so as to not regretting it there are five components to uh, your journey to, uh, to for your preparation process the first one is simply learning the material learning can occur by reading the suasion notes reading the curriculum uh, or watching a video on the content from the module uh, Swager notes video module uh, module videos so learning is gathering information uh, 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 absorbing information practicing is bolded for very precise reason it is extremely important as you go through the curriculum step by step reading by reading chapter by chapter module by module one thing you will find is you need to have regular periodic uh, practice doing practice question either from the QBank, the Swazia QBank, or from the CFA Institute Learning Ecosystem, which is their QBank. Either way, you will find a little subtle differences between them as well as stylistic differences, and that will be giving you a well-rounded approach to, to preparing for the exam. Now the practice component, there is a lot of benefit for it. We'll talk more about it when we get to it. But while you do the first go off at the curriculum, you should be devoting only 40% of your time to learning and 60% to practice. 
people want to just be done with it. So you read through your, uh, uh, your material r rather quickly. You just want to check it off your list because that is how we are trained, instant gratification. That is not the right approach. You want to pr uh, learn and practice. When you practice, you find out how much, how well you learn. All right, so that is the first go at the curriculum. Then the next go is known as the review phase. Now the review phase is very linked, very intricately linked to the first go of the curriculum. First go, remember, includes learning and practice. So the review, if your first go is strong, is good, then your review will be short. You can get through your review in, let's say, two weeks. We have review product that, that, that we'll, I'll talk about late, later on to formalize this reviewing of the curriculum. But that is basically giving you a second go. The stronger your first go is, faster your second go of the curriculum is. After you're done with the review, then it is a feedback loop approach. That is your final component. And that is your assessment. This is what we used to call perform phase. Perform is basically taking mock exams or practice exams and evaluating your gaps in learning. You did it you know, chapter by chapter, but do you remember all of the 10 topic areas and be able to answer all of the, any question within those 10 topic areas uh, within a four hour, four and a half hour uh, time period. That is exceptionally challenging. And that is why one, a CFA exam is one of the toughest uh, exams out there. So, you know, you take a normal college course, you're taking a class in accounting, you take a exam, well, that is just on accounting. Then next day you have an exam on economics, for example. And so you're basically given time to prepare for economics after you try to make room in your brain, getting rid of what you learned in accounting because that exam is over. Well, not so for CFA. Everything all occurs one uh, uh, time window on a one single day. And you're basically required to have that memory dump all at once. So that is what makes it exceptionally challenging. And therefore, because it is exceptionally challenging, Starting late, doing a crash course, for example, like you know, trying to devote 10 hours a day, one month prior to exam, that is not gonna work. That is a recipe for failure. And finally, as you go through this learning journey, make sure you are staying true to the LOS, the learning outcome statement. Why? Because your exam is gonna evaluate your knowledge consistent with the learning outcome statement. Every exam question has to be tagged to a specific LOS. And therefore, anything that outside of LOS is not testable. Now, one of the things that candidates often get suckered into is, oh, this LOS keyword does not talk about calculate. So calculation is outside the scope. All the, the keywords are fairly broad. So even if it does not specify calculate, doesn't necessarily mean calculation is outside the scope. All right, so when it comes to just plain vanilla learning, nothing to do with CFA, learning science. And this is not something that I have found out. This is something that is done by experts in learning pedagogy, uh, in learning science. And so, what is uh, learning approaches that are successful, are, uh, uh, have demonstrated some success, and what are very effective learning approaches. So first we'll look at moderately effective approaches. One is elaborative interrogation and self-explanation. These are approaches which essentially uh, distill the knowledge, what is the key crumbs of wisdom, and that is what you're trying to absorb. So these are moderately effective by trying to understand the underlying process. You are getting a more deeper connection with the curriculum. Now, other approach is interviewed learning. So rather than you know doing 
20 questions on uh, equity, sorry, 200 questions on equity all at one. You spread it out. You do, you know, uh, watch a module video on accounting and then you practice some 20 questions on equity that you covered already last week and so forth. So that makes the learning approach, your, your actual physical learning, less uh, taxing, less uh, onerous. So you are not going to feel the fatigue. When you feel fatigue, your attention span is shorter, your absorption of the material uh, is lower, the marginal utility diminishes rapidly. All right, what are the highly effective ap approaches? So kind of a play on the interleaved learning is the distributed learning. And here what you're talking about is spreading learning over time. And as I was saying, you know, rather than cramming learning in the last month prior to the exam, that is the recipe for failure. So learning over time, let's say over five months, spreading it out leads to better understanding of the material. You're gonna come out of it wiser and uh, better retention. The whole objective is to retain the material that you're gonna be learning you know, so typically candidates start learning five months prior to the exam. And so the learning that occurs in months one and two may seem very distant. Retention is a little hazy. Some loss of retention is inevitable. No problem. It'll come back to you when you go through the review phase. The stronger your underlying learning uh, journey was, the uh, stronger your phase one approach was, the faster your review will occur, faster you will remember. It'll come back to the forefront rather quickly. The test effect. What researchers have found is, you know, uh, testing is critical, very important. And more importantly, getting something wrong is even more important. So you're doing a lot of practice question and, uh, uh, you, you, you know, you get some of the questions wrong. Let's say you did... Uh, 50 questions and you got five questions wrong and five questions you guessed on correctly. So totally you guessed on 10 questions, five of them you got correct, five of them you didn't get it correct. When you go through the review phase where you're evaluating how you did and, and going over the questions you did not get correct, um, you are more prone to paying little extra attention to the ones you got wrong. There is a little punitive mechanism that is triggered in the brain that tells you, hey, I got this wrong, and therefore you don't like that punitive mechanism, you know, you don't like uh, that feeling, and therefore you will uh, devote, your brain will devote the resources to not make the same mistake. The ones you guessed on and got correctly does not get the same level of attention, the same level of, uh, uh, you know, de dedication from your brain, and therefore you may, make a mistake when facing that kind of question, similar question uh, that you guessed on correctly. Why? Because the, the, your brain did not provide the similar level of attention to those questions where you guessed correctly. And this is again, learning science, nothing to do with CFA. So, you know, researchers have given people quizzes on general knowledge and they basically observed the same result. All right, preparing with Kaplan Swayze. First, when you log into your account, you will have an activity feed. Basically, activity feed makes this huge task ahead of you. Remember, the quantity of material is huge. It makes it manageable. It aligns with your availability based on your customized calendar, and you are going to approach it in chunks, what do I call as bite-sized learning. So we use modules. So every chapter is basically broken up into shorter modules with an accompanying video should you need it. It allows you to spread your studying out, which is your distributed learning. That is, remember, critical in or very effective learning style. It does not rely on cramming, which is what you exactly don't want to do. It leaves plenty of time for review, which is an important component of a successful preparation process. All right, one of the first products that I want to talk about, that's our flagship product and that's Sways Your Notes. Three C's describe it, clear, comprehensive, and concise. Comprehensive meaning, yes, it is concise. Yes, it is much uh, shorter in terms of uh, number of words as compared to the official curriculum, 
but it is not compromised, meaning every single LOS, anything that is testable is covered in the notes. I have included every single LOS. That is an important takeaway. It is clear we try to present the material in non-jargon, uh, uh, you know, we don't use jargon, and make it as easily digestible as possible. So present it in a user-friendly manner. All right, the, the Swager notes are five uh, uh, volumes, one through five, and again, with topic areas consistent with the curriculum, the official curriculum of the CFA Institute, and the notes themselves have built-in questions to remember our practice component. Now, the key to the practice, however, is the suasion notes. 3,000 plus questions. Lots of them are standalone questions. And, you know, oftentimes people tell me, well, why are we seeing standalone question when the actual exam is all item set? Well, I say, remember, the QBank is not used as a predictor of your success on the actual exam. It is not that. It is a learning tool. What I want you to do when you use the QBank is make sure you're understanding what you're learning. And that's where the 60%, 40% time breakup that I was talking about. You know, you read something, but you don't really know if you're understanding it. By going through the uh, practice component, you, you are assessing, you're identifying whether you're learning or not. And if you're not learning, you're fixing it. Mock exams, we have six full length mock exam. And I say full length basically replicates the exam day uh, uh, experience in terms of the feel. Remember computer-based testing, so our software aligns with what you're gonna see on the actual exam and has 11 uh, in session one and 11 item sets in session two. Everything is exactly like you see on the real exam. Obviously the questions themselves will differ. Um, I, I don't have access to you, what you are going to see on the actual exam, but we, uh, uh, that's why we have six mock exam to, to cover broad array of testable material, testable LOSs. All right, now we are, what we have done is we have basically packaged this content into easy to order packages. So the first one is essential self-study package. As the name suggests, it is the bare minimum, has no instructional component. So uh, what you get is Swayze Notes, books one through five. There are module videos that I was talking about. If you are stuck in a specific module and you need a tutorial on it, you have video to, to access. Comprehensive video, every single module is covered. Um, you also get quick sheet. That's a trifold with all the formulas. You should be familiar with it from level one, covers with four mock exams, and also includes the QBank. All right, now, keep in mind the Essential does not have instructional component other than the module videos. Now, we have several instructional components. The first one is we, are, uh, we offer an online class, a live online class. This is kind of similar to a college course, three hours on a weeknight, every week for 14 weeks and covering up everything other than ethics. Um, but not, not every single LOS is covered. Why? Because we have a time constraint. So, you know, going over really the areas that we feel are going to be more value added for you. So not, you're not gonna uh, have an instructor read off definitions from a slide. You see it in the notes, there is no, not a whole lot of value added and precisely why we don't do ethics in our weekly class either. Now, as an alternative to the weekly class, one of the things we found is people you know, have uh, varying schedules. You know, so for example, if their uh, classes, uh, and, and the class is based on Eastern time, six to 9 p.m. on a weeknight. So for example, we offer it on Wednesdays and uh, six to nine Eastern time. Well, not every Wednesday you may have ability to attend the live class. You have an access to archives. All archives, whether you attended or not, will be available to you all the way until exam day. So, or until your exam window is over. So you have an archive, but what we found is a lot of people basically having to resort to archive as opposed to attending live class. 
So then we felt if you're going to watch an archive, meaning not a live class, a recorded class, then might as well create content that is not limited to that three hour time frame. So we, what we did was we added more weekly class type content, more practice, more hands on stuff and including coverage of uh, CFA Institute ecosystem questions, some questions from their QBank as well, and uh, uh, created this product, which is basically a, a pre-recorded version of our weekly class. We call it on-demand streaming. That allows you to have complete flexibility. You decide how much you want to cover in one sitting. You don't have to do, dedicate exactly three hours and uh, you can go at the speed at which uh, it, it works for you. So now I'm coming, coming to a package if bundling those instructional component. So premium instruction package basically includes the essential plus what? Plus the on-demand class. And that is, you know, pre-recorded class that we are talking about, as well as on-demand review workshop. So this is, we have not talked about that. So this is within your review phase. In your review phase, we have a product called the exam workshop review. What that product does is it includes two books. One book is what we call as mind maps. It basically think of it as, uh, as slides that, that show you how different parts of a specific reading are connected. So it, it gives you sort of a very top level overview of, you know, you may have only five slides from uh, multiple regression reading, but those five slides is really valuable. Why? Because when you go through it, when you look through it, immediately you recognize, okay, I remember this, I remember this, I remember that. I don't remember this. Let me go and look that up. So that is the purpose of it. That is an instructional component to that as well. That the, So we use those mind maps in our pre-recorded videos. And then we also go over, there is another book, which is book full of item sets, full of questions. And you practice with uh, 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 a question. Not all of the questions are gonna be debriefed in the video, but some of the, uh, a lot of questions are debriefed in the video as well, again, you are provided with a question as well as answer, so you may not need to spend time doing a video debrief for every single question. That is just too much time. In addition to it, we have a super secret sauce, which is essentially, think of it as really condensed, must know, last minute topic, uh, last minute review of uh, most important uh, topics within the, the top, 10 topic areas. So a little more advanced or a little more richer package is the Premium Plus package, which allows you the option to have a live online class as co co compared to the on-demand as well as the option to go to a five-day review instead of the three-day. Uh, again, obviously the five and three is only applicable to live review workshops. So what are the review workshops? We already went through the two books that are included, the mind map book and the question book. Now, um, so the live online is three days, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you'll have to take a Friday off. Again, even if you are unable to attend for whatever reason, all those classes are recorded and archives are included. So if you are able to attend or not, you can have access to the archive. Now, there are there is going to be in person, we're gonna go back, to having in-person seminars in select cities, three and five days. You know, uh, look out for details on our website. All right, so to summarize, uh, you know, what is a successful approach? What is the good strategy to preparing for the level two exam? First, start early. Second, learn, absorb information by reading the notes or watching the videos or both, depending on your personal needs and situation. Um, do the corresponding question, that's your key, practice, remember bold. Attempt the end of reading prompts. And again, we uh, uh, this is also covered in the 
learning ecosystem of CFA Institute when you log in to your candidate portal. Uh, topic quiz. Uh, uh, at the end of each topic. So you're done with equity, go through topic quiz on equity, which are all item set questions. Attend the review workshop. Remember that is your review phase. It formalizes the approach to reviewing. It is really valuable. Uh, uh, we get very, very, very positive feedback on that product. Um, and then that's your the last phase, which is uh, uh, assessment and fixing. So that is where you take your mock exams. Four mock exams are included in the essential package. Your mock five and six are available as an add-on. Uh, again, everybody is different. So some people need a little extra uh, push. And so for those people, five and six may be a good additional uh, um, you know, uh, review. Uh, and, and that is exactly why five and six also have video tutorials. So if you're not as comfortable or you're not as um, uh, feeling prepared, then you may want to add a couple of extra mocks to your por uh, product portfolio. Now, uh, online system, Kaplan online system uses performance tracker. You can identify areas that you are going according to plan and not according to plan. So you can essentially fix your weaknesses prior to uh, going to the exam day. And the last one, we always say save the ethics for last. And it's not saving the best for the last, but because ethics is nothing other than memorization. There are two components to it. You know the standards that, that you need to memorize, not the standard numbers, but what the labels are, knowledge of law, for example, and what is covered under it. And then what kind of questions you see. So doing, you know, uh, saving that ethics for last uh, 10 days prior to the exam is a good strategy because it remains more fresh. There is no retention issue there. All right. Uh, regardless of whether we uh, see you as a candidate within the Kaplan community, I wish you our sincerest very best and uh, good luck and give it your best go.